What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and if this looks eerily similar to the very last scene of the previous video, it's because it is. We literally chopped it and are starting another video because you know how we like to do around here, it's much little effort as possible. <laughs> the all-new Z20 mechanical gaming keyboard from EVGA features optical and mechanical switches available in clicky or linear versions, TOF sensor, 4 kilohertz report rate and media controls making it a great choice for multi-purpose setups. To learn more and to see the full list of features of the new Z20 from EVGA, click the link in the description below. So this is my RTX 3090, which uh, I, you've already seen how disgusting it is if you saw our video about cleaning my 928 build here. Five. Uh, 925 build, yes, the 928 with Nebula that's sitting over there on the... The uh, display shelf, if you will. <laughs> the dust. The dust shelf. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take you guys along for a ride on deep cleaning of a GPU. The GPU is arguably the single most dirty component inside your system short of the system itself. And then the other half of what I'm gonna do today is try and decide if I'm gonna continue to use this vertical mount um, or not. This is the one that came with the case. But look at the amount of dirt that is like built up inside that fan. And that's the pass-through fan, right? That's the other fan, which isn't as bad. Um, I think the reason for that is because this fan was back here. That fan was right in front of the intake fans that was blowing dirt at it when I left the windows open and the computer on during a windstorm, because I'm an idiot. But uh, let's go ahead and tear it down today. So, first things first, I'm gonna clean off as much dirt as I can before tearing it open. So first things first, let's trigger the audience by blowing dirt all over the warehouse using my CompuCleaner.com cleaner. Not an ad, that's just what it says on there. To give you an idea of how caked on that dirt is, look how much is still stuck on there. Like what I'd really like to do is tear down the cooler and then actually unhook the fan. That way I can get to the backside of those blades. Those blades are so swept that I can't get down in there and clean them like I want. Ten thousand RPM. <laughs> uh, I may or may not get accurate RPM readings now, but whatever. <laughs> First and foremost, we need to protect our work surface by using our handy dandy Jace Two Cents gaming mat, available using the link down in the description below or heading to jace2cents.com. So if you've never turned turn down, turn down, turn down. If you've never torn down a uh, Founders Edition cooler, these little these four little screw covers right here are magnetic. So you can just use a piece of tape to pull it up out of there. They only fit in one way, so I don't even keep track of what goes where because of the fact that they only go back in the spot at which they came out of, so that ain't that big of a deal. There you go. That exposes our little tiny like T2 torques or whatever size they are. But first we have to get this piece off right here too, this little cross brace right here is just held in there with a little ball joint. The only thing you gotta keep in mind, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It's a plastic one, no. I fix it. See, one thing you gotta keep in mind though is see these little, these little nubbins? Right there. See how that one has like goop there? Because of the fact that I lost one of these, and there it is right there, it was a thermal pad, see? Stuck in the hole right there. If you look in this side right there, you see a little rubber like thing, and that's what it's supposed to stick in? Well, I lost it when I tore this down last time when we were doing the uh, thermal pad mod, so yay me. There you go. So that's what the underside looks like right there. You can see where our thermal pads were making contact. It was kind of, they're kind of greasy and some stuck to there. Right here is a ribbon cable that you gotta be careful with, like I said. And then over here, it's a little slot. So that pulls back, just like that. And then you can gently lift up and that releases. So that's a, a lighting cable. So if you were to screw that up, the worst thing that would happen is like your LED bar right here won't light up anymore. And then this is actually a ribbon cable for the fan. Or up. And then we can pull the cable straight out gently. And then that's now released. So obviously when you put the cooler back together, you gotta make sure these cables are coming through their gaps where they're intended to. So right here, and then right there, like this gap. And then we've got one more right here, same thing. Lift up, and we can slide that out easily. So we've got this one right here, which holds on part of the bracket, which is going through into the cooler. So that will need to come off. For good measure, we should take these off right here as well. That's holding on the IO bracket. So now that we've got that off, the only screws that's holding the cooler on now is the T, those are probably gonna be like a T2. And this is gonna be true for any 30 series card, 
3080, 3080 Ti, 3090, I believe 3080 has a back brace like this. They learned that the size of the die required a lot of tension to keep the cooler flat against it. That's why this bracket exists. So I'm just making my way around, slowly loosening it up. Otherwise, if you just do one side, it'll go bang, and then you do another side, it goes bang, and it's just a lot of force you don't want. You don't want it to suddenly snap the cooler sideways in some weird way. Not to mention it'll keep this from going bing and launching a screw across the warehouse. <laughs> and then you see how I put my finger down as I knew we were hitting the edge? Because I don't want it, look, that's a catapult, okay? <laughs> you don't want, look at that. See how that screw already fell out right there. So you, you just, you be ready. And once you get two sides off, like two on one side off, then all the tension's gone. So now this should be ready to come off. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I did use, I did use kingpin, but I didn't do a very good job. Look at, look at the, look at how much of that dye is still shiny from where thermal paste never touched it. Jay, the pr super professional guy. So that whole part of the dye was not, and, and here's the thing, that is the dye. That is the silicon. Any part of that that is not getting cooled can create hot spots, which can create weird th thermal throttling or fan increase because remember, AMD, sure, they report the junction temperature as well as the edge temp. So you know what the cool spot and the hottest spot of the card looks like. NVIDIA does not report that publicly to you. It's in there. You can dig for it in certain software. You can't see it. But I, I had been noticing that my 3090 sounded louder lately than it had in the past, which tells me that uh, I bet you it's because of that, that right there. So we'll, I'm glad I did this now. And also too, it's just funny how small the PCB actually is, right? It's silly, but anyway, I'm glad I did that now because that now tells me that there is a benefit to me taking the cooler off. Be careful too if you're playing with a uh, Founders Edition cooler. These are uh, contacts. They're like spring-loaded contacts for the uh, lighting and such, and they push down and contact right inside there. So if you take this off sideways or whatever, like I just took a chance doing because it popped off so violently, um, you could bend those and then they won't retract properly, they won't make contact, or they could bridge where they shouldn't, and then bad stuff happens from there. So this is the ribbon cable for this fan, and now that it's free, it just runs underneath. I can take my Phillips, and I can undo the fan, and like just slowly rotate, see there's a fan screw right there? So slowly rotate, as I go around and take the fan out. And then once I undo this, the fan should come free with the ribbon cable and everything. Should. <laughs> big emphasis on should. And this is obviously a big risk. So, you know, you do this on your own, your own recognizance or reconnaissance or whatever you do it under. So. There's the fan. So now I can get in there and clean that. I could really get in here and start trying to clean off these fins using my brush, you know, get in here and just really go to town, loosen up all the dirt. And these fins are gonna bend as you're kind of messing around with it. The nice thing is you can just bend them back because they're so, they're so easy to, they're so soft, you know, but so we can really get in there and blow it out. And then I can do the same thing with the other fan, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna clean one fan at a time that I can remember which one goes where. <laughs> So after a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol, elbow grease, a soft bristle brush, and a microfiber towel, I was able to get this fan pretty much looking brand new. So I'm gonna set this one over, way over there now so I remember that's the one for the rear. So I can do the same thing with the front fan here, and then we'll come back with the uh, reassembly and the thermal paste, and then we'll play around with the mount in there to see if I'm gonna keep the vert mount or if I'm gonna go with standard mount. All right, so this fan is all clean now, and then um, all I'm gonna do now is take the brush, kind of work it into the fins. This is a more about aesthetics at this point, and then we'll start the, re the reassembly process. But this is about getting in the dust that's stuck in these fins, and this is gonna work for any aftermarket cooler. Obviously, the idea here is getting it to look all the same color. If there's, if there's gray, then that means there's dirt and dust kind of stuck in there. So right now, I'm just kind of going along with the grain and working out any of the dust. And what I'm gonna do at the end is by handling this, some of these fins have been sort of bending. Uh, I'll just end up taking a pick tool and then I'll go through here and then just sort of bend these fins like back into position. Like that one's over, that one's over, that one's over. Right, so I'll just work my way around and make all the fins 
look good again. And I'll do it wherever I need to. It's worse on the back side than it is on this front side. Reassembly, just, uh, the way we did it backwards. So watch the, that part of the video in reverse, like literally backwards if you need to. Um, fun fact, that piece that I said I lost, I found it. It was just chilling down inside the cooler. So there it is, we put it back on there. There's the one little ball joint, like rubber piece it snaps into and there's the other one. So I'm glad I took it apart for multiple reasons now, because now I found it. The other thing I need to do before I do a full reassembly, thermal paste reapplication, with a better job than that, because that's pretty bad. That looks like I just did the dot method in the middle and went, ah, it'll spread. But nope, I'll be using my, my uh, spreader tool here, which this one's all chewed up because I've been using it like down in here, but I'll be spreading the thermal paste after I clean that off, that looks terrible. All right, so it's all back together. Essentially everything works as far as I know. <laughs> Fans don't hit anything as they spin. Fully clean, looks like new. A little bit of dirt there, I need to wipe that down. But remember the vertical mount had it sitting in there like this, which is, how, which is why it looks like it slots right in that spot because I built this whole system around the GPU. But I'm curious now as to how this will look if I mount this in a traditional way. Because I never did that with this case. And I think oops, there might be a cooling benefit to having it be horizontal rather than vertical. Because all the air that this fan pulls in, blows through and out right here, well technically it pulls the air through. So it pulls it through and blows it that way. So with it sitting right there, that fan's just blowing right into that wall, which is not the most efficient. Because anytime the air has to make an abrupt turn or bend, it loses velocity. So let's see how this looks. It really looks empty now. <laughs> I mean, it needs another one, it needs two. Yeah, the issue is this area right here is too empty. And then I can see all that wiring and see through, which I normally couldn't. I would have to build, I, right now I would have to build myself like a little shroud or something that covers that area out of styrene, painted black, which wouldn't be hard, but I mean, it only gets into the mid 60s under gaming while overclocks so, but that's with a, that's what they, uh, a much more aggressive fan curve than stock. But what I noticed is I can't turn this fan up as high as I want because it's so close to the parts of the motherboard tray. It makes a weird sound because of the fan going past stuff. So it makes a weird high pitched kind of a sound that you don't hear when the cooler is not against the piece right there. So as neat as it would be to be like, hey, you know, the cooling will be a little bit improved. I'm gonna go ahead and just go back to what I know is working, which is mounting to this vertical mount. And also too, I'm not gonna be able to change out this vertical mount. I don't know if it's PCIe Gen 3 or 4, but these mounts are very specific to this plate in the way that it, it adjusts on there. So, not gonna be able to uh, switch it out to a Gen 4 riser cable that I have because of the fact that it won't mount down on there properly. So I need to put this back on there. We'll get the graphics card mounted back up in there. We'll show you guys what it looks like in case you, for some reason, have tuned into this video for the first time on this channel. You've never seen my built, my, my personal rig complete. And then we will call it a day. I like taking you guys along for the ride on... <laughs> on this slow descent into madness. <laughs> <laughs> I like taking you guys along for the ride of when I got, when I have, this is like maintenance, I have to do this. I don't just let my systems rot, as far as you guys know. <clears throat> but um, no, in all seriousness, this is what any computer enthusiast would be doing with their systems. You know, if you, if you care about it, obviously right now, even the most basic of systems are expensive, so you should definitely be taking care of it. I think I need to charge this. Cleaning it is a big deal. Um, if you don't, you're gonna start dealing with thermal throttling and other issues that will lead to degraded performance. And if you pay for a certain level of performance, whether it's a 1660 Ti or a 3090 or the upcoming 3090 Ti, any performance that you're leaving on the table that you paid for is a waste. So why would you do that? That's why we are full advocates around here for proper cleaning and maintenance and stuff. I know Phil does it. I know sometimes when I'm bored, I like to just start cleaning my system for the heck of it for no reason other than to clean it. But all right, yeah, it's dang it. Just dang it. Fight. Come on, stupid. Sick alignment. It has a suspension. That is my personal rig that I've been doing all my live streaming and stuff at home. If you're wondering why the heck I didn't do a water-cooled graphics card when every system I've had from the moment I started this channel had a water-cooled graphics card, it's because two reasons. One, this 3090 was a centerpiece. I love the FE cooler. I love the way it looked and I wanted it to showcase. Two, I wanted to see. Now I'm, if I'm running air, 
do I still have an argument if it's worth water cooling your graphics cards, even a high-end one with how good the coolers are these days? Given the fan level noise, yes. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.